Good afternoon. Told you we was gonna do some teaching and some ministering today, so I am here to do the say of the Lord. So with that being said, I'm just gonna sit here and wait for people to come online. Because God has the word for the church. I'm tired. He's tired. I'm tired of the mess that's in the house of God. You know, a lot of people are suffering because of the mess that's in the house of God. A lot of ministers and and children of God that's called and appointed are suffering because of the mess that's in the house of God. Myself was one. I've suffered for watching the mess in the house of God. You called and appointed. Hey, Charles. When you called and appointed... Sitting under mess is not your job. Your job, God puts you in position to deal with mess. And I've been under a lot of mess. Some I dealt with, some I left. Because you get tired of fighting devils and demons. But I guess God doesn't give us a spirit of weariness because that's, called, that's why he called us to fight. Because we can't have carry a spirit of weariness. Let's imagine a soldier carrying a spirit of weariness in a war. They surely will die. And I can't tell you how many times I've been died in, 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 with these crazy churches, with all these demonic spirits working in the house of God. Make sure I'm waiting for some other people to come on. How are you? I ain't messing with you today, Charles. <laughs> not today, Charles. I'm not going to mess with you today. Maybe tomorrow. I'm just going to play a little bit of music. I don't own the rights to the music. Because we're sitting here waiting for some people to come online. Good afternoon, Charles. How are you? How's everybody? I'm hanging in there, Charles. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. Mm. Have, to deal with the, have to deal with the Jezebel spirit that's walking, working in these houses. God called me to that arena. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can believe he did because I've, I've witnessed Jezebel so much and I've been attacked by Jezebel so much. So, I'm not surprised. Say I'm a willing, willing to fight, fight the spirit again. I was on live with a pastor last night. I know that's right. I on live with a pastor last night. Jezebel's coming up against him and his ministry, and he's a, na a national teacher. These, they, these prophets and these holiness people don't understand Jezebel is assigned to us assigned to us to stop, hinder, abort the will of God to stop, hinder God using us to come against us so she's assigned she sends everything to us to keep us like I, I, I picked up on his spirit yesterday he's so tired and weary so, I mean, these churches don't understand you have to get a prayer team form to come against the Jezebel spirit. When you in the apostolic holiness ministry, you need a prayer team. Just for Jezebel and, and Ahab, her team, and them Enochs. I'm waiting for people to come on. I do not own the right to this music. I hate to say that. Keep saying that. videotape on the phone and the, the computer so I can put it on Instagram and YouTube. 
You need to get that shirt made. I'm Charles the Devil's a Liar. That's your favorite quote. <laughs> you need to get that shirt made because it is. It's true. The devil is a liar. He done hindered us and, 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 and strangled our destiny for so long. God knows if you know the stuff I had recently going on. Still dealing with some stuff. I'm going to bind that spirit up. Today. Today. I'm buying that Jezebel spirit up that's working on, on my life. You know, this is how you know when you're under Jezebel attack. Because it don't just, it don't just be about um, the church. It be about your life too. And I'm learning that all these attacks has been assigned to me from people that I most likely came against. And um, they witches and warlocks. So they sent spells and curses out. So now I got to reverse that stuff. Send it back to them and make it loose me. That's why I'm having so much. The Holy Spirit show um, went on prophet. Zach Ponyo page yesterday, he was ministering, and he said, um, he said a lot of these prophets and whatever, they speak in death over us, because they don't want us to come forward, and when they get angry, that's how Jezebel, when she get angry, she, she wants to fight. She wants to fight, so with that being said... See that good, so I said he only works on the appetite you allow him. Appetite, Charles, what do you mean? Appetite. start right now because as soon as I start then people are going to start coming on and then I got to reiterate and I can't go back and forth once I start flowing. I'm going to give them some more time y'all. No, those desires are what um, Jezebel used to work against us. So I don't believe that it's the, the things that we have open. Jezebel knows us just like God knows us. She she studies. You, you know, you heard of the Chinese market. They study America. They know what we desire and they know what we want. So does Jezebel. She studies us. She knows She knows where our weak area is. She knows what, how to hit us. She knows where our heart lies. Oh, she studies us. I, I, I swear, I swear, um, like, like, you know, um, as soon as you get ready to get in ministry, you start walk fluently in what God thus says the Lord, here comes the relationship that's coming from, from hell, they don't, don't have, don't have no meaning to your destination, where God is taking you to, just a, just a, um, a distraction, just a distraction. So it's, I don't believe that it's always about the desires of our heart. She studies us. She knows us. And Jezebel, well, Jezebel causes people to fornicate. 
So that's one of her main weapons against the, the men and women of God is fornication. Because she uses that against us. She 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 uses it as like, you know, when I was out there fornicating and doing what I was doing, I always felt guilty. I felt like I wasn't worthy to minister. So that hindered me a lot. That hindered hindered me and delayed me a lot because I was not preaching under under mess. Yeah, I understand that too. You got you just gotta look for the the, the trap that's being laid though. Cause the old trap gonna be laid. <laughs> You're right, we definitely have to be equally yoked. Hey David. How you doing, brother? My cousin, my brother in Christ. I'm so proud of you, David. You know I'll be talking about you all the time. <laughs> Charles, meet my cousin David. I'm going to wait for a few more people, y'all. Probably need to invite some, but I don't even see my invite button on here. And I don't want to mess with this phone because it keeps falling. Well, anyway, we're going to line up this with the word because if it ain't, if it ain't, if it ain't about the word, it's about myself. So it's not about myself, it's about the word. So I'm going to be coming out of Revelation chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 1 through. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Then I'm going into chapter 2, verses. 14 and 15, 14 and 16. Then I'm going into chapter 2, verse 19 through 23. <coughs> And after I say I'll come through these scriptures, then I'm going to give you this, the <clears throat> characteristics of Jezebel. But you have to know that, know who Jezebel is. You believe it, but a lot of people don't know who Jezebel is. It's like, just like a lot of churches aren't preaching Satan. Satan is real. Satan is out here doing all this mayhem that's in this world. Satan is the one that sent that trap to you that almost tore your life apart. <laughs> Satan is real. I believe that. Alright guys, let's get going because they can always reference this back because I'm going to put it on YouTube and it'll be on here for about 24 hours, I think. I think live stay on for about 24 hours. My eyes are horrible, y'all. My lighting is horrible. But I'm going to try. So let's go to... Second chapter, verses 1 through 6. Ah, it's really bad, y'all. It says, unto the angel of the church. This is where God is referencing the church. Where God is letting the church how if he's pleased with them or displeased with them. So, it says, Ephesus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear which them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast thorn, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. That's me. I get tired of going in these churches and watching these fake prophets and pastors and my discernment is so high. I can almost recognize them. Give, 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 give me about 10-15 minutes 
and I can recognize who they are. So that's what we need in this hour, and this day. We need to discern. We need that um, to ask God to increase our spirit of discernment, not only for the church, but for your personal life too. Who got time to be laboring with the wicked people? That's going to come and the trap that's been set to destroy your life or set you back or delay you and all that stuff. When God has work for us to do in this hour. Oh, Lord. I messed up my thing. Hold on. When God has work for us to do in this hour, I've been delayed so much. It's ridiculous. Years of delay. And I've been prophesied that the spirit of delay and the spirit of setback has been on my life. So, you know, I ask God, when the baby died, use this pain. I had, I can't, I cannot go through the suffering that I recently went through and not fight the devil. The devil is a liar. And like I told God, I said, I'm going in his camp and I'm going to snatch a lot of people out because that's my job as an evangelist, as a minister. So with that being said, that's, that's what that's speaking of. The, the, that's a, that, that's of us who can't stand to see the work of the iniquity of the, the fake prophets and apostles and, and the warlocks and the witches is in the house of God. So then, um, verse 4, Nevertheless, I have some what against thee that thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou hast fallen, and repent, and do, not, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of the place, except thou repent. That 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 right there that reminds me of Saul, cause Saul was anointed. Saul had the anointing of God on him, but then Saul started thinking that he was working the miracles and the and the um and the um you know walking in grace and giving that mercy and stuff. Saul became boastful, and with that being said, when Saul became boastful, God God don't play that boastfulness. Cause we can't turn our head gray. We can't. We can't bring out. We can't make tomorrow into. You know. We can't call out tomorrow, and to, to, tomorrow's not promised to us. So to be boastful, God don't play that. Um, everything that everything that's good under the sun is called. It comes from heaven, not from man. We just tools that He used. So with that being said, when when the power when the power and the people started praising Saul, Saul got boastful. So. God got tired of him and boastful and, and claiming the glory for himself instead of giving the glory to God and took his anointing away from him. So that's when God sent Saul, um, David. And Saul is weird because Saul's know when David come in the house. They know when David's are coming. They recognize David because David come with an anointing. <laughs> A powerful anointing. You know that that anointing come from God himself. That anointing ain't that anointing didn't just come from David. That was God's grace on David, the power of God working through David. So when you walk into a house of a foul or a house that's under a witchcraft spirit, they know who you are. They know who you are when you come in. So with that being said, that's an issue that I dealt with a lot because they've seen anointing on my life. My praise, I love God so much, my praise takes me to different levels. And, um, Saul will get jealous of that praise because he used to have that and God took that away. And then Saul, at the end, he worked, he went into the, um, he went into um, the spirit realm to start seeking um, psychics and stuff to give him a word. He didn't have an anointing to prophesy anymore. He didn't have the anointing to seek God. God closed his ears, shut his ears down on, on Saul. So with that being said, um, the, the prophecies that was going out in the house of Saul, and that's happening today. Prophecies are being sought by psychics now. They're not. They're not actually coming from man anymore because God done took the anointing off of these styles, and they work in witchcraft now. So they have to go to the psychic. For instance, one day I walked in the house of God, and God said, "Study, study, study the word that 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 she, she's preaching." Once I studied the word. I knew that didn't come from God because God had already told me to listen to it. Just listen to it. That's discernment. When he tells you to listen to something, he wants you to use your discernment. So we have to pre pray in this time of hour for the increase of discernment when we walk in these houses because there's a lot of fakes in these houses. It's a lot of prophets. The The ministry of the prophet has zoomed to all time high. Back in the day, when I first walked into a, a prophetic ministry, it was in like 1993. <clears throat> that was rare. 
Now you got prophets all over the place, all over the place. People love that anointing so much to they're faking it. They're faking it. They go get a word Sunday from, I mean, Saturday from the psychic and bring it back to the people. So with that being said, <clears throat> I'm going to go to verse, um, second chapter. Second chapter, verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them to hold the doctrine of Baal, which is the spirit of divinity. They um, practice witchcraft. They're, they're not seeking God. They're seeking witchcraft spirits that's teaching them stuff. So God is saying he's upset that they're walking into the, to the um, arena of Baal, and Baal has taught them to cast and stumbling blocks before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. And um, a lot of people, like like when you go into these psychic places, they, they tell you to, to do this and eat this and, and wash yourself in this. That's, that's, that's bow. That's worshiping another guy. You don't make, you don't became you don't became an idol worshiper or you're using candles and stuff and believe it or not that's that's work that's that's in the house of god there you might go back there in some of these houses and definitely catholic ministry catholic ministry work under the um spirit um the spirit of bow they use candles and that that bead thing and stuff that that's the spirit of bow that's an idol that bead so god is angry about some of the things that us ministers are actually doing they're, we're, we're doing stuff. They're doing stuff. That stuff that's not of God. That he's not pleased. Alright, so let me go to chapter 2, verse 19. I know the works and charity and service and faith uh, and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more thy first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered the woman of Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to fornicate, commute, to commit fornication and to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. There, there it goes again. Fornication, um, doing witchcraft with those, um, like uh, Santa Maria. They, they, they sacrifice goats. Um, eat. Eat, well, I seen one they had a cake with the goat tongue in it. That was right next door to me. That kind of stuff is not a God, but they're doing that stuff in church. They're doing sacrificing and using. And it says that, that, that scripture says that it's being allowed in the house of God. And God is not pleased with that. So he's angry with that church. That's what he's calling me to minister about the church that's allowing Jezebel to take over. And God is not pleased with that. They're working iniquity in the house of God now. And um, God, is called, God has sent them the mandate out for them to repent. But Jezebel does not have a repentant spirit. Jezebel is boastful. Jezebel is controlling. Jezebel don't submit under no one. So they don't have a repentant spirit. So with that being said, now I'm going to go into... Now I'm going to go into the characteristics of Jezebel so you can know and recognize Jezebel when you see her working in the church. So let's go and let's read the nine. Well, I have nine of them. It's 25 characteristics, but we're going to do nine right now. And then we'll come back later and do another nine, and then we'll get all 25 of them done. So the first, the, um, first character, let me tell you the characteristics of Jezebel. Jezebel works under the authority of Baal. That's the that's where they sacrifice to gods, a moon worshippers, idol worshiper. They got all those statues around and light candles and sacrifice goats and um, some religions sacrifice people too. So a lot of these missing people might be sacrificed, sacrificial lambs. So um, they work under witchcraft teaching. They worship idols. They hate authority, and they are non-submitted. So, for instance, Jezebel are come in and take over the church. And when the church leader is trying to sit her down, she's not going to pay him no mind. She's going to do what she got to do to get up under him, seduce him. Then she got a noose around his neck. He can't, 
he can't now he can't control her because she done seduced him and he fell into her weakness. And Jezebel is not a, 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 a sex. It's just a name. So Jezebel can be a man or a woman. And the perfect example of Jezebel that's working now, they call her, they call it narcissist. Narcissist is a Jezebel spirit. It's controlling. It's jealous. It's angry. It's not happy to see no one prosper. Only person that it wants to be happy about is very, it's a very selfish spirit. It's only happy if it's prospering. It's, it's getting all the attention. So if you buy a house, it's not going to be happy for you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's going to be in competition with you because now they got to go buy a bigger house. You buy a car, they got to go buy a bigger car. This is a very competitive spirit. And that spirit is in the house of God working. And it's causing a lot of mayhem. Not only that, um, the traits of Jezebel. She hates submitting to authority. That's one trait. Two, Jezebel has hidden selfish motives. She's a very selfish person. She loves to be praised. And if you don't praise her, Jezebel will become angry. You can touch the spirit of Jezebel. Just don't give her what she wants. Say no to her. Say no to Jezebel. And then you're going to get an angry demon come out after you. Just say no. <laughs> you can touch the spirit. Don't give her what she wants. Don't fall into that trap when she try come try to seduce you. Then the anger is going to come out. Not only is the anger going to come out, if that don't work for her, she's going to go get her troop, and then they're going to come up against you. So then, that has happened to me where I didn't fall for Jezebel because I know Jezebel. I know I recognize her. Then when she couldn't get me, then she started making um, lies about me in the church, telling them I was doing stuff I wasn't doing. Um... And as far as ministry, when I was engaged, she told them that I was having sex. I had stopped having sex. I was in ministry. I respect God now. So I can't be in a pulpit, pulpit preaching and, and I'm defiling God's house like that. So I wasn't having sex. I was still engaged, but it is what it is. But they will find accusations and get a group to come up against you. They will torment you so bad in the house of God that you will leave. You will leave. Let me tell you another way how you can recognize Jezebel. Jezebel's that one person or two people. Because in big church, they got many Jezebels. They keep trouble going. They keep trouble going because they're trying to get authority. And if they can't get authority, then they're constantly keeping trouble going. Not only that, Jezebel will get on every ministry because Jezebel needs to be praised. So she will be on every ministry in the house of God causing trouble. She's never going to be there not causing trouble. So that's how you recognize that Jezebel spirit, too. Now, thir um, number three, Jezebel seeks to be worshipped. As I said, if, if, if your anointing is high, she's going to try to outdo your anointing. She might even mimic your anointing. She might try to be, um, that's why you can't let Jezebel touch you, because she'll try to grab on your anointing. Next thing you know, she's doing what you're doing. It is a witchcraft spirit. She can learn your anointing. She can steal your anointing off you. It's a spirit that's working. And number four, this is a very controlling, competitive spirit. Now, let me give you an example of a Jezebel. Jezebel's not just in the church. She's at your job. She's probably your friend, your cousin, whatever. They competitive and they very jealous. Say for instance, when I when I fix my house up in the front, I got a whole Jezebel Bellic family across the street from me. They do stuff to their house to outdo my house. I buy a car, they go buy a car. My friend buy a car, they go buy a car. They always buying cars to try to outcompete the next person. They all and then like the holiday is here. They decorate their house, but they have to be extreme in everything. Then if you decorate your house to be more extreme than theirs, and they'll add stuff to their house, they're very very jealous, competitive. Now Jezebel could be your 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 sibling. You got a sibling that compete with you. That's nine out of ten. That's a that person is under a Je Jezebelic spirit. You got a person in your family that's constantly causing trouble in the family. Nine out of ten, that person is under a Jezebelic spirit. They calling it narcissist now. Narcissist is Jezebel. 
<laughs> they don't the ma the world entitled it something else, but the Bible called it Jezebel. That's what that narcissist spirit that everybody is talking about now. That's Jezebel. And let me see number number five gravitates towards leaders in God's house. I explained that. Jezebel, she comes in, but she's not coming in just to sit there. She's coming in. Nine out of ten, if that if that house is very active and very powerful, she's at, in most likely in big churches, and um, she comes in and she tries to she tries to dethrone the pastor, and that's why the that's why pastors have to have a prayer team against the. Um, Jezebel spirit because she's going to get up under him or her. She's going to manage her way on out in, into their life. Come on, let's go to dinner. Definitely if they're single. God bless them if they're single. Because she knows everything about you. She doesn't study that man or woman or guy. So she knows how to get close to you. So she'll take you out to dinner. She'll buy you whatever she can buy you. She will actually she'll constantly bring you gifts. Bring you dinners. Don't eat her dinners because most likely her dinners is spiked with something. Don't eat her food. You got to learn to recognize the spirit. You got to learn to recognize the spirit because she will feed you. <laughs> remember, remember back in the days, they was like, I don't eat no spaghetti because of that, 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 that situation? That's Jezebel right there. Women and men of God ain't working in no witchcraft. If, if it's something like that, roots or or taking hair and using it against you and stuff like that that's 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 not a god that's that's satan right there if, if so you hear somebody talking about they 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 um they rooted somebody or whatever you you better run from them because just like they did them they'll do you but that was an infamous thing back in the days i don't know if they still doing it because i don't hear about it but i did know someone that did it they put the um, blood in the spaghetti or something and when the guy went down south one time, he found out that the person did it. It's someone close to me. And he found out that the person did it from um, a church member or something. Told him that he had um, roots on him. And they reversed it. And the person went crazy. That's one thing. When you play with the devil, he can use you if he wants to. But when the person finds out, like, I send stuff back now. So that person might go crazy get cancer or something, don't, don't, don't send your evilness out to me because I'm going to send it right back. So that's what you have to watch out. The, uh, Jezebel works under the witchcraft spirit and she's highly into voodoo, witchcraft, you name it, she do it. And they got this new stuff where they can put stuff on their hand and touch you and they got you. It's crazy. That spirit realm is crazy how they can um, do stuff to you and you don't even know it. Even down to your anointing. You can't even let people lay their hands on you now because if they're working under witchcraft spirit, they can contaminate your anointing. And I remember one guy said, he said, you got the gift of healing. And he said, let me touch your hands. And I was hesitant because I knew I had the gift of healing. Remember, I said I, I've been sent to the hospital to heal people before, so I knew I had that gift. He said, I don't know what it is. I can pray and lay hands on everybody, and I can't heal. I can heal everybody, but I couldn't heal my wife. So he said, and this was in the Warlock Church, so, Lord Jesus, I, you got to be careful who you let touch you now. Because they working, they working in iniquity. They working, in, the devil is using these people in the house of God. Now, the seventh, the sixth um, characteristic of Jezebel is, Jezebel will not forgive you. If you did something to your brother or your sister, it says to go and ask for forgiveness. And ask forgiveness. Jezebel will not forgive you. She don't have that in her. So now you can test that spirit too. If you done did something wrong to somebody and they mad at you, ask them to forgive you. They'll forget. If they from God, they will forgive you. But if that's Jezebel working and you and and you don't and you done did some art to her. She's she's not gonna forgive you. She done did some stuff to you. So you probably need to um, speak some speak some reversing prayers over yourself and re and send stuff back to Satan where it came from, Jezebel, because Jezebel works with witchcraft. She will put a spell on you in a heartbeat. Um, when I 
I, I became broke after the um the last warlock that got got a hold of me. Cause when I, once I came against the witchcraft spirit that was that he was working in, he got so angry. He confronted me. He said, "And I didn't have I didn't have a bad looking car. I, I like the PT Cruiser." So I had a PT Cruiser. He's like, you you think you got a high calling on you and this and this and that. Tell God to give you a better car. What what that car got to do with my annoying? I like that car. But after that, I lost the car. My finances dried up because he was working stuff on me. So with that being said, I I had to I have to I had to start releasing myself from the stuff that he sent to me and the uh, witchcraft spirit that he worked on me because I knew he did it. I felt it. I felt it all. After I walked out of the house, I became so messed up mentally, spiritually, financially in my body. He was doing all kinds of stuff to me. So the Holy Spirit had to come to me one day as I'm crying on my bed. We're like, what's going on? Because I didn't know. I didn't know that, that stuff at that time, that they, they can do that, all this stuff. So the Holy Spirit said, reverse everything that he sent to you. And I'm like, huh? Because I felt, he, he had my body so twisted up, I felt like a pretzel. Like, I can barely, my room is a matter of five feet away from my, the bathroom is like five feet away from my room. I was so knotted up, I couldn't barely get to the bathroom. I cried to go to the bathroom. So I kept saying, God, I don't know what this is. And the Holy Spirit one day said, Felicia, reverse the curse. He says, send every spell, every spoken curse, every pen curse, every dog curse, every curse that come in your spirit, send it back. So with that being said, I sent it back. And then the next week, my friend, she was still going. And she said, he came, he came, he preached that, that day he was in so much pain. He said, somebody did this to me. No, somebody did nothing to you. I just sent you back what you sent to me. And I was released. I was released at that moment. My body was back together and I was moving around. But you have to be careful when you walk into the spirit of witchcraft because when you do Satan's job and you don't succeed in it, guess what? Satan going to turn on you. Satan going to turn on you. You look up, you you might lose a child or something. You might you might get cancer or something. Satan will turn on you when you don't succeed in the work that he sends you to do. All right, now let's get back. So, um Number seven, counterfeits. Jezebel will counterfeit still. She leeches off your anointing, meaning she'll copy your anointing because she done set up under you so much. She, she remember, you have come into the house of God and everybody sees your anointing. So they know that you got the power of God on you. So they're seeking you. Jezebel doesn't like that. Jezebel does not like that. If you come in with a higher anointing than her, you have you have just gotten yourself an arch enemy. Cause now you you came in and everybody's seeking you where everybody was probably seeking her before she came in. Before you came in. Cause that's her, that's how she is. She's competitive. And then her, her giftings. You remember when in Moses and God told Moses to throw the staff down cause and it turned into the snake. And the wizard, the warlock or whatever, threw his whatever down. And it turned into a snake. That's how Jezebel mimics the anointing. Oh, she can do some She can do some stuff in the spirit realm. You can bet on that. She can do some stuff in the spirit realm. So, it's a God. Like, most people, a lot of people in the last church that I had, they gone. They gone. They left. Because I prayed for the people in that house. I had to leave. It was my, I did what I was sent there to do, and I had to leave. So now was my job that the people that was under that witchcraft spirit be released. So a lot of them did leave. A lot of them left. So she will counterfeit your anointing. She will get close to you. Um, the transference. You heard of, um, like when you have sex with someone, you get a soul tie. The same thing that happened in the spirit realm when you're working with Jezebel, she can steal your gift. Next thing you know, you're you're not being able to work in your gift because she done stole it. Now you gotta labor before God, get your answers, um, um, pray fast so your anointing to come back. It, it, it is weird how this the spirit realms works. The spirit realm works. Okay, number eight. 
she makes people afraid of her and confused. So what I'm saying is a lot of people if you don't if you don't walk into your authority and she come against you, you're gonna be scared of her. You're gonna be scared of her. So you have to know who you are to come up against a Jezebel. You can all you can sit there and recognize the spirit and pray against it. But if you don't know who you are and you don't know your authority that you have, I suggest you don't come up against Jezebel. Because it's a lot to, to deal with. And she's very um she's very she's very authoritative and she's she will make you afraid. She'll say some stuff. She'll curse you right before your very eyes. And you look up and things are happening to you or things are happening in your life. You got people, um, um, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Perfect example. Remember the movie Color Purple? And she said, until you do right by me, <laughs> nothing good will come to you. That's the kind of stuff Jezebel did. Even though her husband was, even in the color purple, that man was under the spirit of Jezebel. Because he was very controlling and just mean and nasty. So, the blessing in her, that, that, um, the blessing in her, she, she it's like, but that, that thing she did, that's how Jezebel will do you. The, until you do right. I remember, um, one lady, I ended up dating a married man. I didn't know he was married. He didn't have a ring. He didn't have a tan. And the wife found out about me because we worked together. I worked downstairs. He was my boss. I worked downstairs and she worked upstairs. She, I never knew that they were married. So him being my boss, he had access to my computer. He would send me messages through my computer, send me flowers and roses and all that stuff. And he wooed me. And then one day I worked so far out, he made me miss my train because he said I couldn't get off the phone. I couldn't release that client until I dealt with the situation that I had to deal with the client with. So he made, he deliberately made me miss my bus. No more buses was coming. So I said, well, you, I'm going to miss my bus. What am I going to do? That, he was like, I'll take you home. And that was the beginning of me walking in mischief with a married man. And it was, it was crazy. I ended up losing my job. The woman told me, she said, until you... And I had left him alone. But he wouldn't let me leave him alone. It's hard when it's your manager. I, I wasn't at the level I'm in now where I'll walk away from mess in a heartbeat. Because I done been through enough mess that I know when to walk away. So with that being said, she, um, the woman was a woman of God. So, it, you know, when you anoint it, if you have a mouth that can, that can speak blessings and curses... She cursed me. She said, until you leave my husband alone, you'll never be happy. And at that time, I was buying this house when it was happening. Up until the day, I can't stand this house. She cursed this house. I have so much mayhem with this house. That's why I keep saying I got to sell this house. Because this house don't belong to God. This house belongs to the devil. And I got to get out of it. <laughs> but until I can, I'm here. But she cursed she cursed this house. And everybody that know me, I done had a fire. I done had, I done had, um, I done had to deal with Santa Maria's next door. I done had fights on this block. I done had the Jezebel girl across the street constantly attacking me. Um, I done had so much mayhem in this house. It was so bad. So one person said, Felicia, if it wasn't for, um, bad luck, you wouldn't have no luck. Like, that's how, that's how much stuff I go through since I moved in this house. Because she cursed this house. I don't mess with her husband no more. But with that being said, her mouth is anointed because she's a child of God. I know she's a child of God. But I didn't know who she was when I was messing with her. Well, messing with her husband. So, I know she's a child of God because, and until that woman, you know, I fast and I pray. Like, sometimes God will tell you not to go for it in something, and you do it anyway. At that time, I had put all my money down on this house. I shouldn't have moved into this house. I shouldn't have moved into this house, but by me had put my money all down on this house, I came on in. And it has not been, it has not been good. So now I got to be released from it. And the way you get released from some things, you got to let it go. Like in that relationship, you know that girl ain't right. You know that girl most likely is walking under some kind of demonic spirit. You know that man is walking under some kind of demonic spirit. But she got you, she got the hooks in you so bad that you can't release it. So that's what I had to learn. That I should never have came into this house. I should some of the relationships I 
I could have evaded a lot of pain and suffering if I had listened to what God was telling me in my spirit. Like, God will give you a warning before destruction. You heard that saying? A warning to come before destruction? That's even in the house of God now. I, I use discernment because I, I ain't got time for the mess that's going on in these houses. So if I go into a house and I see I see Jezebel at work, I'm leaving. I ain't got time unless God assigned me there to work against it. Then I have to stay and work against it. But certain things I just will not sit under. I will not sit under. You have to choose your battles because nothing, nothing, no one is perfect. Nothing is perfect. So you have to choose what you're going to allow in your life and what you, what anointings you're going to, what mess you're going to sit up under in these houses. Because there's a lot of mess going on. Alright, so the next one is um, number eight. No, I said that one already. The ninth one is can't celebrate others' blessings. Can't compliment, compliment people. Always have, always has to be number one. I said, she don't compliment nobody. She's not going to be happy that you work, that you started your business. Oh, no, that's competition. Now she got to go start three businesses. This person is never going to be happy to see no one else driving. This person is never um, never going to be happy to give you a compliment. You wait for outside and they under the Jasmine spirit and you hold your breath, you're going to die. Because <laughs> they're not going to give it to you. They're not going to give it to you. And in and, and, and this... And then this, you have to watch for the spirit because it works amongst the people that we love in our lives. Like uh, when I was coming up, my sister used to fight me a lot. I didn't know what was going on with her. And as she fought me, she would say like smart things like, now see who who, who everybody going to love. Because everybody loved Felicia. It was the anointing and the, the Jesus in me that they loved. The love that I put out. And I still try to be that loving person. So I, I, a lot of people are, are drawn to me. So with that being said, Jezebel not going to like that about you. So you have to watch and look that, look for that amongst your kids. Because you might have five kids and you got that one that's always causing problems. Because it's angry, it's jealous, um, it's not going to be happy for nobody because it's not happening to them. You got to watch for that and you got to rebuke that when you see that in your kids. Um, wish somebody would have rebuked it, in, it with me and my sister because me and my sister used to fight a lot. And... Um, one time she fought me when I was pregnant, cut my face all up. It was ridiculous what she had did to me. But let me tell you something. When God is on your life, not one of those scratches or cuts is on my face. She had messed me up so bad that I used to cry every time I look in the mirror. To, so bad that I, uh, I evaded the mirror. My sister used to know how to fight with razor blades in between her fingers. and between her fingers. And at this time, she, she was always jealous fighting, fighting, fighting me. So that was one time that she got me real good because I was protecting my baby. And it's my sister. I don't want to fight my sister. I know my sister. So she, whereas she fought me, I didn't want to fight her. So you have to watch for the Jezebel spirit amongst your children because she will tear your family apart. Not only will she or he will tear your family apart, have your kids fighting with each other, and then she'll divide your family, um, for instance, for instance, you might have five kids that's walking in favor, and that one. So then she'll come up against the five that's walking in favor. She'll always find things to, to lie about on that person. She'll always, she's, she's always going to cause strife and grief when it comes down to the quote-unquote, as she would call it, the favorite child. It's not the favorite child, it's just anointing on God. Like jo Joseph had favorite amongst his brothers. You see how they was jealous of, of him? That was the spirit of Jezebel working in those brothers. He sold them into slavery, put them in the pit, put them in the pit, then slowed them into slavery. One thing about it, when God blessing is on your life, I don't care what nobody going to do. You're going to prevail and you're going to succeed anyway. So, like, I had my down periods, but God has always showed back up. Like, I had my pit moments. This is a pit moment. I'm coming out the pit. And I'm going into the palace soon. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've suffered a lot. I suffered a lot for this anointing. And I say that I keep saying that to y'all because y'all wonder why things are happening to y'all. It's because of the anointing that's on your life. It's because, because of the call on your life. It's because of the favor in your life. When you got people coming up against you, it's that favor that they're coming up against. It's that godly, them blessings that they see God blessing you. They can't stand you because of the love that God had for you. So they're going to come up against that. You don't even have to know who you are. Like when I was younger going through this stuff, I didn't know nothing about what I'm going through now. 
I don't know. I didn't know nothing about that when my sister was angry with me, when um, when she kept fighting me, um, even down to going to the church. When you come into the church with anointing, you can bet your enemy sitting right there. If she ain't sitting there, somebody gonna call her. Cause I've had Jezebel called on me twice. She wasn't there when I got there, but once I sat in the sat and joined and and, and God started using me, then here came Jezebel. Here she came. Jezebel will get called on me. And um, so like I said, God is tired of the mess that's working in, in, in the house of God. He's tired of that. He's tired of watching the devil reign in God's house. So the hour has come that God is going to deal with Jezebel. And um, like you hear, uh, you hear a lot of pastors just falling suddenly. It's a good chance because God is God has taken them out for what they're doing in the house of God. A lot of broken Christians are out here because of the the pain that they suffer in the house of God. God is tired of that. I remember about 15 years ago, an evangelist. I was an evangelist, and my friend was an evangelist. We was a bad team together, and um, um, she moved because our kids went into the military. So she moved with her kids. So we lost contact. Then I had, we had discovered each other about five years, six years later. And I said, what you doing, girl? She was like, girl, I ain't doing nothing. She said, I can't go in them houses. Them people evil in them houses. She said, do you know? She said, Felicia, everybody that was up under us, they sitting out. They're not in the house of God. Because we got attacked so bad and we didn't understand it. That's why you can't lean to your own under, understanding. You had to labor before the Holy Spirit and labor before God and talk to God. So you, he give you an understanding of what, who you are, what you are, what you're going through, and why you're going through it. You have to get that understanding. You have to, you have to labor before God to know who you are. And like I said, I wouldn't come up against Jezebel until you know who you are. You have to learn who you are. That's why I said yesterday you have to develop a relationship with God in order for God to show you who you are, in order for God to activate your mantles, Mantles a prayer, prayer, active prayer life is a mantle. Um, to be a David is a mantle. To be a Joseph is a mantle. Um, those are mantles because they call to do certain things. A prayer warrior is called to be a prayer warrior. She's called to that to that arena. So you have to you have to develop your relationship with God in order to be able to understand who you are. You don't have a relationship with God, God, God can barely get your attention or speak to you because you're so busy or whatever. So sometimes that's why I say you have to set time aside so God can can so you can labor before God and he can tell you who you are. He can tell you your gifts. If you don't know your gifts you don't know how to use them. They're in there, they're dormant. They're not doing anything because you don't know how to they're not active. You ever heard somebody say if you don't use your gift you lose it like a paint a art a artist. If they don't use it they forget how to do that. Um, um, like, like, believe it or not, I did hear for decades on top of decades, but when I came back into the arena this time, I had to ask the Holy Spirit to teach me certain things again, because I forgot I wasn't using it no more, so I forgot, so now that he's brought that, that creativity back to me, I had to ask him to teach me how to use it, so with that being said, the anointings on our life, if they're sitting there and you're not using them, then they're doing it. So now you got to seek the Holy Spirit to learn how to use them. So with that being said, it says, I, I put on here, if you are under leadership of one with the Jezebel spirit, your gifts may be hindered. Remember I said when I walked into this house and he wanted to touch me, I got hindered. Can't, you just can't let anybody lay hands on you no more. It used to be it used to be okay, but now it is not okay because people that's working in divinity, um, the spirit of Baal, doing witchcraft and stuff, they got demons attached to them. You don't want them demons attached to you. You ever seen a movie um, with with um, Denzel Washington when he was walking down this road and the demon would come out of one person and jump into the other person and then come out the that person and then jump in. It had, demons need a body when it's working in the physical realm. So with that being said, um, when they touch you, that, that demon might need your body to use you. You don't want no demons using you. 
you, you'd be surprised how a lot of people um, in, in the house of God has demons attached to them using them against their brother or against their sister. So, <clears throat> discernment in, in this hour is a must. So, I need... I need those that's walking fully in, the, in, 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 in Christ. I need y'all to start praying for discernment. Because you need discernment. God needs to take the scales off your eyes. Like a fish has scales on his skin. You can be blinded to, to things. So you need the scales taken off your eyes. So you can have spiritual eyes that you can see what other people can't see. That's how I am. My discernment is so high. I can talk to you for a few minutes. And I'll start picking up your spirit. Or, or, or a demon in you may come, come out of your, your spirit, and I'm, I might see it. Like I dated this guy, and God showed me who he was, and I went on and dated him, and that, that man, like to rip me apart. But when I first met him, personally, the demon came straight, and 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 I saw it, came straight out of his face, and I'm like, oh my God, what was that? That was when I was learning about the spirit realm. So I just went on and dated him. Later on, God said, I showed you who he was. That was not a man of God. That he had the, nar um, what y'all call, he was a narcissist. He had the Jezebel spirit in him, which man is called a narcissist now. That man took me through so many changes, Lord. Even tried to discredit me as a minister, too. He tried to do that. I had met him online. He went online. Everybody loved me online. Did you see what I said about how Jezebel come up against you? Everybody loved me online. He went back online and told them I did this, I did that, and I did this. Yeah, she called herself a woman of God. And they'll come against your 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 calling. And that's what he was telling everybody. He is so deep into telling people personal stuff about me. And But God allowed me to walk through that. So now, I know to look for spirits. I know to look. But they say that eyes is the key to the soul. You need to look in them eyes when you're dating these people, when you're getting into these relationships. Look into the eyes. Because I have a person that I look into their eyes before, and the demon came for it. And that's the first time I had seen it. It scared me. Because this person was close to me. The person don't walk in the spirit now, in, in that demonic area now, because I prayed against it. But... When you and I used to look in this person's eyes, the eyes used to scare me. That was the, that was the demon in them looking through me through his lens. So that's what the sermon is about. Every I, the old people used to say, "Look in a person's eyes." It's not it's not in the word. Look in a person's eyes. The eyes is the key to the soul. Practice that. You need to know who you're dealing with. The, they could put up a facade, but they can't hold it long. You know how when you start, first start dating the girl, the woman, or the man, and they so nice and so, oh my God, this is a blessing from heaven. Give them about two or three months. They cannot hold that facade for long. That's why I say test the spirit, because you need to know what you're walking with. You need to know who you're dating. And soul ties is real. So if you're having sex with an evil person, guess what? That is, that's attaching to you. That's attaching to you. So, so I just taught you today to look in people's eyes. You have to learn. I mean, look in their eyes. And if they're not of God, the spirit is going to come in. If they're not of God. You see people with the brown eyes and stuff and all that? Sometimes it's because they smoke marijuana and all that. But sometimes that shows you that that pot person has a demonic entity with them. They don't get no rest. Because the devil ain't going to let you have no peace. Um, they don't get no rest. So that's why I say look into the eyes. You see how I clear my eyes is? You know, devil up in there because I be rebuking stuff. When I hear Satan, like, for instance, um, trying to keep myself holy till my husband come. The devil put things in my spirit like, you know you about to do. The devil is a liar. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. 
Um, girl, that man really like you, but I know what he's about. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm not falling for the okie dokie, the banana in the tailpipe. And we have to look at that because he'll put things in your spirit and make you weak. And make you weak. And you look up. I had to, I, we had to, re, we had to fight our strongholds all the time. So as you say, you see, my eyes are very clear, right? There ain't no demon up in there. Because I got, I use holy oil on myself. <laughs> Some of y'all need to get this. It's a lady on my page sells this. I mix my own, but I want it hers. So, um, I, I touch this my head. And I rebuke anything that's unclean in me. Because I've, 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 you're on the bus. People sitting next to you with unclean spirits. They can attach to you. They can follow you. So you had to rebuke and you had to clean your house of uh, 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 spirits and stuff. 91st Psalm, read that out, out loud in every room and it will clean your house. Your whole atmosphere will shift, I guarantee you. The whole atmosphere, the peace will come over your house. And, hey Eddie, oh wow, you, Eddie Abney, oh. I didn't know I had you as a friend. Hey, Adney. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, what, what as I was saying, when you're when you're getting into that dating round, even when you go into the church or whatever, you test. You don't, don't let them touch you. You start watching their eyes. The eyes will tell you if their spirit is clean or if their spirit is vexed. I remember my baby daddy. That man used to compete. Jasbel, narcissist. That man used to compete with me so much in ministry that he got so jealous of me that when I got ordained, he went to school to get ordained. He could not get licensed to save his life. So then I became his enemy, narcissist. You ain't this. You ain't that. He started speaking against me. It was so bad. It was so bad. So one day, the Holy Spirit said, look in his eyes. Oh, my God. When I looked in that man's eyes. I seen all this demonic stuff going on in him. And the Holy Spirit is showing me which one it was. And, you know, a lot of people out here with a lot of stuff in them because they, they be doing stuff and they be under the wrong spirits and stuff. So he had an alcoholic spirit. He had a um, drug spirit. He had a sex demon. He had, he had all kinds of stuff going on with him. And God was just showing it to me as I was looking in his eyes. It got so bad I couldn't look in his eyes. It got so bad I had to run from him. I had, even though it was my baby daddy, I had to tolerate him sometimes. But then he, he got so bad that God had to shut him down and I had to walk away from him completely. That's how bad it got. God had to move me because he, you know, God had to move me so far away. That's how I got all the way up in the Northeast. Because it hindered him from getting to me. That's how bad it was. That narcissist almost made me lose my mind. I ended up at the um, in the psychiatrist's office. From what him and his mother was doing to me. I tell you, this anointing that I have on my life, I paid a price for it. I paid a price for it. It didn't come easy. And when that, he was, he was, he was on, he was what you call a narcissist. Very jealous. Um, this teeth right here is a fake teeth. He came home one day. He was very jealous. Um, when I used to walk down the street, he said, what did you do to that man that he looked at you? And I'm, I'm walking straight because I know how jealous he is. I ain't looking at nobody. Well, you must have twisted your eyes or something. He saw something that he's looking at you like that. What? So then it, it's so bad that when he came home, this I'm telling you about people with spirits working in them. It's, like, I had I had Jezebel and the narcissist up under me, and I didn't know what that was at that time. That man abused me mentally, spiritually, and physically. This teeth is fake. He knocked that out. Remember that big glass ketchup bottle? He slapped me right in the face with that thing. One day. Came home. He asked me how, and that's when I had the hair business. I was constantly doing hair from, like, 7 o'clock to, like, 2 o'clock. Two, three o'clock in the morning. I ain't had time to go outside, so he had asked me one day. He said, "You been outside?" I said, "Nope." That man went in the closet, and I don't know. It could have been clothes from yesterday, but he went in the closet, smelled my clothes, and smelled perfume on one of my clothes. He said, "Yes, you had." Came back and gripped me up, and it was a ketchup bottle on the table, and slapped me with that that ketchup bottle when I got away from him, and knocked his teeth out, broke his teeth. So, with that being said, that's why God is saying, teach you about the narcissist Jezebel spirit. Because 
you, we all done encountered this person. It's a lot of them out there. Not only is it in the church, it's in our lives. It's in our relationships. It's at our job. People people crazy. Like your boss could be a, 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 I had a boss that was Jezebel. That man, when it, every time it came time for me to get a, um, a higher position or whatever, he would demote me. The, 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 the bosses was talking about me. He would go to them and tell them something. And they, and they wouldn't give me the, the position. They wouldn't level me up. It was so horrible. So God had to just one day snatch me out of that job. That job wasn't for me. I was being tormented at the job. So Jezebel, narcissist, not only is at the church place. It's at your job. It could be in your, one of your children. It could be um, the boyfriend, the woman that you're dating. Um, it could be, it could be in any arena of your life. It could be your mother or your father. My mother had a strong hate anointing on me uh, against me. She hated me. That was Jezebel. Well, I call her. I call my mother Jezebel. The stuff she did to me, I didn't know who Jezebel was, but I knew she was evil. The Holy Spirit used to tell me, "Stay away from her. Stay away from her. Stay away from her." Cause she was on. She was. She was addicted. And every so often she would come home for a week or two. And when she came home for a week or two, I was her target. She tortured me in the third back in the third bedroom in the back on the second floor. She tortured me every day until she went out to get her fix and she stayed out for two more weeks. That's when I got freedom. Then as soon as she came back in, my torture period started again. I had Jezebel for a mother. Tell you, Jezebel has always been after me. It's because of the anointing that's on my life. You could have never told me I would be coming against Jezebel. You could have never told me that I would be walking in this arena. But God allowed all that to happen to me to get me here. Not only that, your children may be walking in that. You might have to come against it. You don't have to. You don't have to choke her or whatever. You have to pray for the children. When you see that spirit at work, you have to pray for him. Met a little kid last summer. I used to go over to a friend's house with my grandson. And this kid, when I met him, I stopped my grandson. I stopped going to my girlfriend's house because I couldn't deal with the little boy that was coming to her house. I knew he had something on him. She recently called me, told me that he was doing gay stuff. I said, I knew it. I picked that up. I only met the boy once. When I first met him, I picked, I discerned his spirit. He was about five or seven years old, so y'all got to look for that kind of stuff. You can't allow your kids to be upstairs playing with people or downstairs playing with kids because kids know stuff. Demons minister to kids in their sleep. So whereas you thinking that your kids is fine hanging out with them kids or you don't know what they saw or what they've been through, and a lot of times when a person has been molested, they even come withdrawn or they become a molester. That's a spirit that's working. So that's that's one thing um, I'll be teaching the spirit realm because you don't know the spirit realm. You don't know what demons are working. But I picked up that kid's spirit instantly. And I kept my eyes on my grandson. Well, I stayed there for about two hours, but I, kept, I didn't take my eyes off my grandson. And every time he did something, I would check him. I would check that little boy. That little boy was probably about six or seven years old. My grandson was about three, four. But I saw the controlling spirit in him. But I picked up on that sexual spirit too. And I told my girlfriend, I said, I know you're a trusting person. But I don't kids know stuff now. Um, the, 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 the person that I know killed someone, they said he had been molesting kids since he was a kid. When he finally molested a person that I know that he killed, they had let him out. Um, he was about 18, 19 when he killed the person that I know. But he had been molesting kids since he was a kid. So that's a spirit at work. You have to learn spirits and discern them. Like I discerned that kid's spirit. If I had ever left my, my grandson over that little kid's, over, over that, and that, with that little kid in his presence, he could have did anything. Because come to find out, her son has wisdom because he's a prophet. He's a baby prophet. So he has discernment. He su he sees stuff. So when um, he was doing something to him, he was like, he, he left that room and went into another room. And the little boy's like, come on back, come on back. He was like, no, you know what you're doing. That little kid had discernment because God is with him. He's a prophet. He's a baby prophet. He's about seven years old, but 
the little kid been talking some wisdom ever since he was about three. Because he told me, he said, one day he called me out. We was in a craft store. He said, Miss Felicia, you're going to die. His mom said, don't say that. Don't say that. I said, no. He's okay saying that because he's not saying I'm going to die physically. He's going to tell me that I'm going to die spiritually. Because God had work for me to do. And I was out in the world. I was doing stuff. I was clubbing and all that stuff. And I died. I went to my last clubhouse at Marvin's Bar, cuz, and the Holy Spirit, I was across the street smoking cigarettes, talking mess across the street. Holy Spirit said, turn around. I turned around. He said, you see that place right there? I said, yes. He said, say goodbye and never return. And that was about maybe about 10, 11 years ago. I turned around, I said goodbye, and I never returned. Mm -mm. That's like when God told Lot, and his wives to leave Sodom and Gomorrah and don't turn, don't, don't look back. And the wife looked back, she turned to a pillar of salt. I wasn't turning to no pillar of salt. You had to add here, the word still exists. And it's like, um, if I had turned back, God knows what had, what had happened to me if I went back to that bar. God knows, God knows, he protects us. So with that being said, that little kid knew some stuff. And like I tell a lot of people, the devil is in the spirit realm and he ministered to people through their sleep so if you have a wicked dream or whatever you need to rebuke that when you wake up immediately rebuke it rebuke it or like um my friend said before her husband died he knew he was going to die he was getting visions he could have rebuked that and not been um, killed that when he got killed i said y'all was getting visions and y'all a lot of people don't understand the spirit well God talks to us in our dreams, so does Satan. But Satan going to bring evil stuff to us. So when you he bring the evil stuff, like for me, he's always giving me sex dreams. I have to rebuke that when I wake up. That's something that the devil uses against God's high calling. Is we can clean ourselves up, but that sexual act, that sexual gene, let me tell you about the sexual gene. I don't care if a person is retarded, excuse my language, retarded, delayed, uh, physically not able, um, mentally not able, that sex gene is always active. They know about sex. I don't care how young they is. Um, you ever heard, um, um, I was watching a show, and the kid was mentally retarded, but it, it wanted a girlfriend so he could have sex. I don't care how delayed, physically, mentally, uh, whatever. That sex gene is always active. Sex gene is always active. Because that's something Satan uses against us. He'll get us all bound up with the wrong relationship. A lot of times when they hear, oh, she whipped. Nah, that sex gene got your butt. It ain't about being whipped. That person is taught how to, 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 to communicate with your body. Communicate with your body. They know how to handle you. So with that being said, I was so sad. I, said, I told my girlfriend, I picked that up. I knew that kid wasn't right. I knew that kid wasn't right. I said, please, do not let your son play hours with somebody upstairs or downstairs and you don't keep checking on them. My kids, even, even though they're relatives or whatever, I keep checking on them. Because that devil is tricky. Tricky. So, and you wonder how a lot of kids is gay and stuff or whatever. Once the spirit touch you, it can attach to you. A lot of people that molest it, they even come be gay, they come withdrawn, or they come very promiscuous. It's a spirit attached to that. So that's what we're going to be learning the spirit around. You have to learn the spirit around. How can you fight what you don't know? How can you fight what you don't understand? You have to learn the spirit around. And in the um, holiness ministry, that's what we deal with. We deal with the spirit around. That's why I am called like a spiritual warfare because I war in the spirit realm. Um, I can watch stuff and I'm going to pray against it. You're not going to sit up under me with mess. I'm going to pray against that. Your kids come around me and I see stuff, I'm going to come up against it. So with that being said, um, even down to like like when you're, when you're anointing this so high, people call on you because they know you can, you can reach God because you done labored before God. Like, um... People calling me to pray for them because I don't even know. Like one person called me and I didn't know she knew I was a praying lady. 
but she said, God told me, banged on my door, God told me to tell you to come pray for my son. And I'm like, huh? So she said, God said that to come to you and ask you to pray for my son. He was dying. And I prayed for her son. Uh, I want to say this is about 15 years now. That boy is alive. Because God sent me to pray for that son. That boy is dying. So God will send people because they know things about you. You might not even know about yourself. I didn't know I was called to this prayer life. All I know is I prayed a lot. At that time when she was talking, I prayed a lot. I pray. I was, this is my war room. You come in here, you might feel something. Some things might shake off on you because this is my prayer room. <laughs> when the kids want to come in and play, come on. I don't, I don't stop them. Come on. <laughs> and with that being said, we're going to learn about the spirit realm because we need to learn about the spirit realm. You need to know how to work in the spirit realm. You need to learn how to recognize spirits. Like I was saying, I recognize that spirit on that little boy. You need to do that. I can, I, I can go into a store and I can recognize a witch. My girlfriend, we at the crab store. The same day that her boy, her little son said, you're going to die. And it, he didn't mean physically. He meant spirit around. And that's when God told me to walk away from partying and, and stop doing all that stuff. I died. That old Felicia had to die so the new Felicia can, can rise. Death don't always mean death. Death can mean death of stuff that you're doing. And um, that, little, that day that the little boy called me, said that, a witch had came in the store. I told my girlfriend, that's a witch. She said, what are you talking about? Why are you talking about? Don't say that kind of stuff. I said, girl, that's a witch. She said, how do you know that's a witch? I said, um, go next to her. She went next to her. I said, she hurried back to me. Because ain't nothing but no, ain't nothing but evil spirit, negativity coming out of that lady. But I had saw her aura. Her aura was real, real dark. And I want y'all to do some people watching. Watch people. You see how clear my eyes is? My spirit is clean. Watch some people. I've seen, I've actually seen demons. Demons don't have white. When you look at people, i seen, one day I was at, uh, on Ridge Avenue, somewhere in Roxburgh or something. The Holy Spirit said, I want you to watch this person. When they turned around at me, they had no white. The Holy Spirit said, that's a demon. That's a demon with a physical body. So I want y'all to start watching people. Watch the spirits. I don't know how many of y'all have witnessed that. Uh, if there is a true demon, they don't gonna have, they're not going to have no white. But if they possess, they can have white. But you got to stare in the eyes. Because demons do possess people. What do you think all these people with mental illness? That, that, that's possession. Um, I've heard a person had 23, 23, 23 um, personalities. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 23 personalities. When I asked about this, she had been being molested. She had been pimped out by her mother. And in that, her mother was selling her for drugs. In that, she was sleeping with these people. She had acquired 23 separate spirits to deal with each person that was touching her. That's possession. So they said you got to be careful who you lay with. Because you don't know who, what kind of spirits or demons they got in them. And, um... And back to us teaching in the spirit realm. We had to learn the spirit realm in, in order to come against the spirit realm. All this killing out here, that's the spirit of murder. You know what the spirit of murder reigned from? Jealousy. The spirit of murder comes from jealousy. You get so jealous of your sister or your brother, brother doing good, or that guy that you're sitting up under the drug dealer is doing so good that you get so jealous that you want to go rob him and before you know you done killed him. That that's that's what's going on out here. The spirit of jealousy. I don't know what it is about the black male race. They just so jealous of one another. They not lifting each other up. It's rare that you find a black man that's lifting each other up these days. Back in the old days, they was their brother's keeper. Now they their brother's enemy. Your 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 child can be your enemy now. Your 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 brother, your sister can be your enemy now. That didn't used to exist back in the old days. But that's the spirit that we're working up under the Jezebelic spirit, which is a jealous spirit, and it don't like to see nobody doing good. And if it does, and it get really jealous of you, <clears throat> it will come after you and kill you. That jealous, that jealous spirit 
um, it brings forth the spirit of murder. Jealousy, hate, and envy. That brings forth murder. If you ever know people that got murdered, and you ask what happened or whatever, like like the drug terial, terial, terial thing, that's greed and that's envy. Because they jealous because this person claimed this corner, and now they got to get rid of this person because they want that corner. They want all that, all that, that corner is bringing that person. That's jealousy, and that's gluttony, and that's eat. Eve, just pure evilness that you would kill someone over a territory or something. But that's how you recognize spirits. You have to recognize spirits. And I'm going to touch. I'm going to touch deeper on the spirit realm, definitely the murder spirit realm, because that's what we got going on. Another spirit that we have going on, and um, it's the this molesting, this um, sexual spirit, which is a, called the spirit of perversion. That's a demonic spirit. Um, the spirit of perversion is that little kid had the spirit of perversion. I picked that up on him. Um, the person that killed the person that I said that I knew, that was the spirit of perversion. He was doing it since he was a kid. He, he must have been molested and that spirit released to him. So now he was molesting, but when he molested people, he killed them. That's what he did. He didn't leave no evidence. He killed them. So that's a spirit that's working, a spirit of um, fornication, perversion. It comes with fornication. I just say keep ourselves holy. And, 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 and I just really want y'all to keep your eyes on your children. Because as you see, the spirit of perversion is, is really in real evil now. It's snatching these little kids and molesting them. I've seen something. The man molested a two-year-old violently. The baby didn't die. That baby is going to be messed up. That baby is going to be messed up. Um, so you have to keep your eyes on your children. And you see it's working very fast. They're snatching the kids. They're doing all kinds of stuff. Now, in the harvesting of organs, that's the spirit of gluttony that's working. The, 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 um, the experimenting with the cancer, that's the spirit of gluttony that's working. They experiment with cancer so they can... Um, so they can make money. So that's a spirit of gluttony working. That's why I got. I said the the root of money, the the root of evil, money is attached to the root of evil. Gluttony. That's a gluttony spirit that's going forth. All right, y'all. I'm gonna get off. I'm probably not gonna come back tomorrow because I got a lot of stuff to do, and then I'm gonna wait for the next lesson. Well, I gave out. Y'all gonna have to rewind this because I gave out nine characteristics of Jezebel. And I read some scriptures of how God is angry with the church because Jezebel has taken over the church and, and the church is allowing her to work, her, him to work. So I gave those scriptures out and I'm going to go and do what I got to do, y'all. Thanks for coming on and, 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 and watching me. But we had to develop the relationship. We had to learn with the spirit realm, how the spirit realm works. So that's. We're going to be teaching that. I'm going to be teaching that because you, they don't teach spirit round in church. Only per church that teach spirit round is the holiness church, apostolic church, prophetic church. They teach the spirit round. The spirit of religion don't teach the spirit around because that the spirit of religion is under Satan's undoing. So Satan is not going to buy this house. So if he start teaching the spirit of, of religion, then people are going to get awakened. So if Satan not doing that. He's not going to divide his own kingdom. So, with that being said, like these um, Baptists or whatever church, they're not teaching Satan. They're not teaching the spirit realm because they're working under it. They're working under iniquity. So, with that being said, God is getting ready to awaken the prophets and the, the apostolic ministry to another level where they're going to come up against the spirit realm, the iniquity that's working in the spirit realm. So, with that being said, I'm, I'm, let, me tell, let me try to get y'all to to um, start praying for your area. I pray for my area. I go for a walk sometimes and I walk by four or five blocks and I just pray in my area because iniquity and all this wickedness is working out here. So you need to cover your area. Cover your house. Cover your children. Um, say a prayer for your neighbor. You never know what they're going through. I pray for my neighbors. On my right, my left, my block. I pray for them. 
Only Lola. We're not gonna talk about my Jezebel neighbor because she don't she don't get no glory. But anyway, so we're gonna come back next. Um, the next one I gave out nine characteristics, so I'm gonna give out another nine, and that's eighteen. It's twenty five characteristics of Jezebel. So eighteen, then I'll come back and give out the next seven. So stay tuned. God bless y'all. And lift up your area, lift up your brother and sister, and do as I, as I had ministered to you, to watch your children. Look for the Jezebel in your family. Pray against it. Pray against it. Don't let, don't let Jezebel um, reign in your family. And that's my word to you. God bless y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. See y'all next time, okay?